Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is set y equal to 0. First thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is understand that our previous ways of solving the equations, which was isolating the x, does not ha cannot happen anymore. Because here, we combine like terms because x was equal, you know, you had two x's, right? And they were the same term, so you could combine them. But you can't do it because that one has x for it, right? Right, exactly, yes. What are we looking for in this one? Like, we're, we're doing the solving the same thing. We're trying to find the value of x, the x-intercepts. But the problem is, in the, in the linear equation, they have the same factors of x. So we could combine them. Here, you have x squared and x. Those don't have the same factors, so we cannot combine them. So now what we need to look into, can I erase this? Yes. So now, to do that, we need to use a very, very, very important property, which is called the zero product property. It's actually not that bad. What the zero product property states is if you have two numbers, or if you have the product of two terms, then, and they equal 0, then one of those numbers has to be 0. And just think about Think about numbers you know. Wait, say that again? If the product of two numbers is equal to 0, I get it, I get it. or yeah. terms, or variables, or whatever, one of them zero. has to be 0, or both of them. And just think about numbers. Try to multiply two numbers. If the only way for it to be possible to give you 0 is if one of them is 0. Does that make sense, Renee? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the next thing that where it gets a little bit difficult is that doesn't just work for numbers. That doesn't just work for numbers. That also works for expressions. If I have the expression x minus a times the expression x plus b equals 0, and again, guys, you could replace these with numbers if you wanted to, which we're going to do today. But just you know, think of a and b as real numbers. If you have this times this equals 0, then you can say x minus a equals 0, or x plus b equals 0. OK? So now what's important about that is now you have an equation. Can you solve this equation for x? Yeah, you can just add them in there, right? That's how I thought you were saying, no, you can't. I was like, uh, And then you can find this one would be x equals negative b. Thing. So in this, in this instance, what we are going to do is we need to rewrite this so it forms a product. We know that the first step is setting it equal to 0. So we already got the 0 in place. Now we need to rewrite an expression so it forms a product or a multiplication problem. And the process of doing that is rhymes with tractoring. Factoring. Factoring. So you guys do have some familiarity with factoring. Well, it's close enough. You should have said cheesecake. Cheesecake. All right. OK. So, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, on the last step, Noah, I'm going to talk about again reverting back to something you guys are familiar with. Let's take the number eight. Totally different problem. If we look at eight, and I want to divide eight by a factor of it, I'm just going to do something here. If I take eight, and I take 8 and I divide it by 4, what is my answer? 2. Now what I want you guys to understand is when I take 8 and divide it by 4, the answer is 2. I can rewrite the number 8 as the product. 2 times 4 equals 8, correct? So the important thing that I want you guys to understand is when I have a number, at, or my dividend, and I, t and I divide it by our number called our divisor, I get our quotient, or our answer. What I want you guys to understand is the divisor times the quotient gives us back our original problem. So what we want to do, what we're going to be doing to create a multiplication problem is we need to find something that divides into our number. Well, we don't have something easy like a numbers. 
we have this crazy thing. But we need to find something to divide into it. And what we're going to divide into it, we call our GCF, our greatest common factor. Molly and John, it's too much. We need to identify our greatest common factor. And well, when we're identifying the greatest common factor, what we're identifying is the factor that divides into both of them. So we want to look for numbers and variables that divides into both of these terms. So 7, does 7 divide into 7? Yeah. Yes. Does 7 divide into negative 14? Yes. yes. What about x? Does x divide into x squared? Yes. Yes. And does x divide into x? Yes. Yes. So our GCF is 7x. That's going to be our divisor. So when we're factoring out, really what we're doing is dividing out. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem. And I'm kind of doing this you know, the slow way. But you guys can definitely quicken this up once you get used to it. So you have to divide each and every one of these terms. And 7x, 7x squared divided by 7x, the 7's divide to 1. Or right, that goes, hello, hello. that just goes there. 7 divides by 7 one time, right? And x squared divides into, or x, x divides into x squared x times. 7x divides into 7x squared x times, right? Because x times 7x gives you 7x squared. Then 14 divided by 7 is negative 2, and x divided by x goes to 1. OK? So when I take 8 and I divide it by my, by my factor, I get my, my quotient, which is right here. Then I take my quotient and I multiply it by my divisor. Well, my divisor, again, was my GCF, which is 7x. So what I want you guys to see is this is 7x times x minus 2. Does 7x times x minus 2 give us 7x squared minus 14? Yes. yes. You can check that by using distributive property. OK? So again, I'm just trying to use this information to help you guys with this. Now I can apply the zero product property. I can say 7x has to equal 0 or x minus 2 has to equal 0. And now I have two equations that I can solve for x. So I divide by 7, divide by 7, x equals 0, or add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. And now you guys can see I have, again, two answers. Did you record that? Yep. Okay.